of Local Government and Community Relations from for Cal State Fullerton. We're so happy to have you join us today. And I have the privilege of introducing our guest, Mayor Bruce Whitaker. He was initially elected to a two-year term of the Fullerton City Council in November 2018. He served in 2012 as the Mayor Pro Tem. In November 2012, he was re-elected to a full four-year term and was unanimously chosen by the council to serve as the mayor for 2013. In November 2016, Mayor Whitaker again won re-election and was selected as the mayor for 2017. In 2020, with a change from at-large elections to elections by district, Whitaker, a 32-year-old resident of Southwest Fullerton, was elected to represent the fourth district as, and was once again selected to serve as the mayor for 2021. He has previously been appointed to the Fullerton Planning Commission serving for three years. He has a history of public service to the community at both the board level for the County of Orange as well as the state and he has had several positions throughout the County of Orange. He and his wife Linda are lifelong Fullerton residents. They've been volunteers and supporters of Habitat for Humanity, Fullerton Cares, Women's Transitional Living Center, Crime Survivors, Inc. Resources, and One Legacy Donate Life among others. We are pleased to welcome um, Mayor Bruce Whitaker with us today to provide a State of the City update for our nonprofit community. At the end, I'll help facilitate uh, questions and answers that we may receive from both Facebook Live as well as in the chat. Thank you, Mayor Whitaker. The floor is yours. Mute. You're on mute. Mayor Whitaker, we're going to try to get you to unmute here. Am I good now? You're excellent now. Thank right. you. I was saying thank you very much for the kind introduction, Katie. There were a couple things that were just a little off on that, though, that I'd like to correct if I could. <clears throat> I was originally elected in 2010, and I, I think uh, inadvertently it was 2018 on the intro. But um, I, I think people may have figured that out. The second thing was uh, there was a reference to me being a 32 year old uh, candidate and actually 32 year resident of the city of Fullerton. Unfortunately, with uh, being 32 years old, I'm really lapping that maybe a second time here. So, but I appreciated your sentiments on that. You know, it's really a pleasure to be with uh, all of you this afternoon and have an unimpeded conversation. I know this was billed as a state of the city. Uh, in the time available, I don't think that's quite possible. But what we can do is something that I wish we could do as a city council uh, a little more often, which is just have an open discussion of many of the major uh, issues that the city faces. We can't really do that without having those individually agendized and without working on a plan of action. Uh, as far as the council. But with a group like yours, uh, your board members, so many notable citizens, people who really pay attention to and understand uh, the ins and outs of government at, at every level, I think to have a conversation like this can be very constructive. And so anytime that I address a group like yours, I'm really listening about twice as hard as I'm saying anything. And I would like to, um, at least touch on some of the key areas and subjects uh, facing the city, some of the challenges, and then I'd like to make it more open for questions and for follow-up as much as possible. One thing as I prepare for the other uh, State of the City address was we were asked to come up with a theme. And being someone who appreciates good writing, I know that uh, alliteration can be overdone many times. But it just, it struck me over and over again as we were identifying what the priorities are for the city of Fullerton is the letter P just comes up repeatedly over and over. Uh, so even, even to begin priorities, then uh, my number one priority as mayor, and this is my third time serving as mayor, has been pavement. It's been the state of our streets, the sorry state of infrastructure in the city of Fullerton which became that way over decades. But now that we are faced with trying to uh, put more than band-aids on the problem, it's really important that we reconstruct our infrastructure, especially streets. Uh, there are other issues as well. We're well on the way with, with another P, which is pipes. The water department is replacing city water mains. 
at a very accelerated rate. And we hope that that will pick up speed uh, as time goes forward. Um, the other big P that comes up right away has been pandemic. And I'm sure that in years hence that people will look back to this point in time, at least this stage of history in Fullerton's history and the overriding uh, topic will be the pandemic, uh, the lockdown, the actions that have been taken to try to see the city through this difficult time. We've had many uh, business owners, uh, many employees, uh, many who are living paycheck to paycheck who have been very adversely affected uh, through this pandemic, not to mention the immediate threat to themselves and to their loved ones. So the city has taken on many new responsibilities at this time, even with the core responsibilities uh, being first and foremost. And I wanna, I wanna step aside just a minute and talk about that. Uh, we have different levels of government, different layers of government for uh, very tangible and real reasons, which is, uh, they specialize in certain activities in providing for the public that we serve. I know that there are many, even in your group, who appreciate a very activist government, but at a time when the city is having difficulties, uh, even meeting its core responsibilities, those things that no other level of government is going to deal with, like our infrastructure, and like more immediate concerns that we have in the city. I, I believe it's important to get back to basics and to focus on those core responsibilities that only the city government, that only this uh, municipal uh, corporation will deal with. Now we've been pressed into more action on a number of fronts. Uh, those fronts you're all very aware of, the increase in the incidence of unsheltered individuals, homelessness, uh, which has dominated much of our thought and actions and, and plans uh, at the city government for several years now. But that has peaked. It's become even larger, even, even a greater concern uh, during this pandemic, these last year and, and now so far this year. These items can't be ignored, but they do require the help and participation and funding from other layers of government, from our county government, from state government, and from federal funds. And that ability to finance and to, to uh, take action is critical. Uh, the city itself is in a financial position where it just isn't possible for us to take on all these uh, I guess, increasing demands on city funding uh, without the help of those other uh, entities. But I do also want to take a moment out and say thank you very much to the collaborative nature, to the participation of elected officials uh, and their cooperation with our city uh, throughout this pandemic and lockdown. We have been very pleased that Individuals have been willing to set aside differences, uh, differences in opinion uh, to do what has been necessary to provide for our citizenry. The other two Ps which come to mind immediately when we're dealing right now with all these city issues are pensions. Uh, pension payments are peaking and that's going to be happening over the next eight to 12 years. It's an additional burden on the city's uh, finances, on uh, revenues that, uh, that we have to work with. And it's going to be steadily increasing over the next few years. It's one more demand that we have, which has to be met. We really don't have an opportunity. There have been many efforts at reforming or at least stabilizing uh, the pension problem, but we're not alone in that. The city of Fullerton, uh, many, many other cities uh, have the same challenges. And in large part, those pension payments are going to public safety, uh, our police and our fire. Again, two core agencies within the city, which no one wants to see suffer, that we want to ensure that they have all the wherewithal necessary to meet the challenges that we're facing uh, today. 
So this is one more in a series of challenges that we've been working on. The uh, planning uh, at the city, uh, which so much of what city government officials do is land use decisions. We've been veering in the direction of what I believe is, is a somewhat imbalanced uh, situation where we are increasing as we are required to do by state law and by other um, uh, formulas which are uh, causing the city to address uh, supply of housing, supply of livable units in the city. But what it's doing in, in some respects is, is taking the city in a direction of becoming uh, much and much more of a bedroom community. Fullerton, which had always in the past been blessed by a certain balance in, in this city of having uh, the right ratios of industrial uh, employment, of commercial, of uh, certainly all of our retailers in the city, and then housing, housing in each category of housing, which allowed for diversity in our city. But increasingly with the focus on building and creating more and more uh, livable units, the city will be moving away somewhat from what is one of our other challenges. Uh, we do have growth in property taxes. Property taxes have been remarkably stable during the pandemic, but sales taxes have suffered uh, fairly considerably. Now, Fullerton already was in a weak position when it comes to sales taxes. And that one cent solution, which is CITUS sales taxes in the state of California, uh, has been a godsend for certain other cities. Uh, just an example, recent uh, comparison showed that uh, per capita, uh, the city of Brea had $488.37 per capita as far as their sales tax revenue. Uh, a city that's very similar to Fullerton, the city of Orange, we're about the same size, uh, very similar in many respects, had sales tax revenue of $301.40 per capita. Uh, Placentia, even Placentia, a bedroom community, uh, $223.43 per capita. Garden Grove, $235.55. Compared to those numbers, Fullerton at only $144.43, which is less than half what City of Orange uh, provides as far as sales tax dollars. Those are the two largest sources of revenue uh, for our city. And as we grow, and especially as we grow in population as a city, it's going to be important to see what we can do to balance out that mismatch. And one of the concerns, as I mentioned, that I have with uh, land use planning is that we are foreclosing that option of having usable space for commerce or for industrial employment in the city. I hate to get into too many numbers, but as far as our budget, uh, a key thing uh, that the council is looking at uh, is setting the budget for next year. Uh, over the next couple months, that will be a primary focus. It's looking at this stage, the latest news that we've gotten and what is a moving target is that we will likely fall short of a balanced budget of perhaps $3 million, maybe three to $4 million. We will uh, utilize reserves to help cover that shortfall but we're very keen on doing what we can to try to bolster reserves, considering the outlook for the economy over the next few years. Uh, somewhat, now many people uh, are looking forward to our ability to utilize one-time funds. The federal government cranking up the printing presses and sending money our way, uh, $34 million to be spent over the next couple of years, it's still very unclear uh, in terms of how a lot of that money may be used, what's going to be allowable. 
But the way we look at it, uh, the city of Fullerton, the city manager has been accurate, I think, in uh, his measurement of this, which is this is one-time money. Much of it is intended to backfill for extraordinary expenses that we've had during the pandemic. And with that being the case, we're going to be very judicious. I believe this council would be very judicious in the way that we spend that $17 million per year over the next two years. In this case, I do wanna also thank uh, my colleagues on the council and other key people in, in Fullerton city government for understanding the, the uh, threat that current times are presenting and looking past differences. We, we have a very, another P here, we have a polarized council right now. And I think, I think it's fine to uh, call it just what it is. It is polarized. Uh, in, in effect, now that we have um, uh, council members elected by district, each council member does represent their district. And one of the unfortunate attributes of by, uh, representation by district is the fact now that citizenry uh, citywide only gets to choose one council member every four years. So whereas in the past with at-large elections, all of us, every one of us was able to choose all five council members uh, in two-year cycles. Uh, that has changed with district representation to where now, uh, for instance, I can only pick one choice within my district uh, for council. And then the next two-year period, we'd sit out. Uh, some people are coming to this realization uh, and they're a little bit surprised about it. I speak with people that way all the time. And to them, it's a little bit incomprehensible that four-fifths of the council, 80% of the council that makes decisions that affects all of us in myriad ways, that we have no direct leverage uh, in terms of that. Of course, you can contribute to whomever you want. You can promote, you can endorse candidates but uh, we all now have that sole option of choosing the one representative for whatever district we live in. Well, that was a long way to go around explaining the fact that the polarization is likely to get even more pronounced, not necessarily uh, lessened over time. And with that, there is one good uh, aspect to, to this, I guess, uh, ongoing debate and discussion on what city uh, government should be about. And that is participation. We have had during the pandemic an increase in public participation. The council has worked hard to maintain in-person capability for council meetings, which have been held uh, consistently in chamber throughout the pandemic. So there is a very high value placed on transparency uh, here in Fullerton city government. And we do want to remain uh, accessible and we do want to hear from the public and hopefully your ideas, your best thinking is going to help pull us through this. Now, I'm not sure where we're at time-wise. I could, I could go on and on with so many other specifics, but what I'd really like to do and what's important to me is to hear what priorities you might have and what solutions, what possible solutions you might suggest. Because I've always said this, and, and I really mean it, I'm a big believer in brainstorming. We have so many capable people, so many smart people in the city, so many people with uh, very particular talents that we can bring to focus on some of these mutual concerns, these mutual problems. And I want to encourage in every way that we have that ongoing open dialogue in this city. I believe it is one of our largest uh, assets and something that we should tap into regularly. So uh, with that, Madam Chair, I'd be happy to entertain any questions or certainly try to catch up on uh, something that I may have missed that someone was hoping to hear. Thank you. And Katie, um, I see a couple of questions in the chat. Do you want to ask the, one of the first ones? 
Yes, I do. Um, one question, I believe you addressed this a little bit, Mr. Mayor, is um, what is the city's long-term plan to address the homeless crisis in the city? Well, thank you for that question because we, we did the opening of the Navigation Center a few days ago. And some of the comments, even by people who are big advocates for, for uh, providing for the homeless had mentioned that they were very surprised that of all cities that Fullerton was in the lead on this. And I had to give them an opportunity to address the group as well. I pointed out that uh, it should be no surprise at all that Fullerton has long been a leader in offering creative homeless solutions. Uh, for many decades, we've hosted the National Guard Armory, which uh, only two cities in the county have done so. We were the first in the county to have a full-time homeless police liaison officers. We worked with Coast to Coast for five years to provide services to homeless residents in Fullerton. Uh, this council declared a shelter crisis and provided direction to seek state and federal funding to lessen the incidence of homelessness in July of 2019. And very early on uh, in 2019, late summer, the city council supported that navigation center and expressed an intent to partner with the Illumination Foundation and establish a facility in Fullerton for the NAV Center. We were the first and only temporary safe parking program in partnership with the Illumination Foundation and Pathways of Hope for, for more than a year. And then the city council did approve that facility, the NAV Center, which is the first in the county with both navigation center beds and recuperative care beds and with a full medical clinic. Uh, the city has also provided funding for tenant improvements uh, at the NAV Center and also at uh, the Kramer Homeless Shelter as well. So what you're asking what we intend to do, I think we're going to do more of the same and what we would like to do is certainly uh, our share, but what we're hearing also from many of the other residents and citizens and business owners in the city is their concern that our city might become known mostly as a center of homelessness. And that being the case, we're back to that earlier thing that I talked about, which is balance. We need to be balanced. We need to do our share, perhaps more than our share, and that's fine but we do need to coax and try to uh, get other cities to do their share as well. We have a virtual endless supply of homeless to be helped and it shouldn't be a burden that's placed only upon Fullerton or primarily upon Fullerton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a couple more questions. This one comes from Facebook and it says, hypothetically, how much tax revenue could a city gain by allowing dispensaries within the city? The numbers are all over the place. Uh, one, of, one of the concerns that I have is, of course, if you're in the very early cadre of, uh, of cities who are doing this, you're probably going to reap more revenue fairly quickly. But as more and more cities normalize that process, as we have many, many more sources of supply, uh, it's fairly predictable that the revenues would drop and they might drop fairly substantially. I know we've been faced in Fullerton with many residents who are very concerned about the city being in a business promoting the use of cannabis. And so just like with so many other issues, we have uh, advocates, proponents, and then we have detractors and people who really don't want the city moving in that direction. This council has been seeking to find a balance of protecting the interests of most of its residents while finding a way to accommodate uh, current state law and the requirements that uh, a legal product be allowed to be sold uh, that we normalize and uh, regularize that process. I, I do suspect that the council will be back dealing with this once we're through our budget uh, trials here. And that was in part why the delay was sought by the council in my opinion. Oh, and let me just take a quick time out on it and say what I failed to uh, communicate early in this discussion is these are my opinions. I happen to be mayor right now, but these are my opinions. And I'm still only 20% of the vote on the city council. 
And I'm not trying to purport that I'm speaking for any of the other four council members. It would be my hope that we could find a way to unify uh, through this time frame and arrive at some conclusions that uh, you're all going to be happy with and that the public can live with. Excellent. Thank you, Bruce. Before we go on to the, the, another question, um, Jay had a follow-up question is, why was Fullerton so low on the city tax you were comparing with the different comparable cities when, when you first started? I didn't catch why. So why is that? Well, you know, that's going to be a major question as we're looking at our budget uh, this year, and it is abnormally low in terms of, uh, well, I, get, I think one of the reasons might be that Fullerton was a victim of the redevelopment wars. In, in redevelopment, so many cities engaged in bidding contests over uh, automotive uh, dealers and over big box stores uh, and uh, you know various retails, uh, retail outlets, which uh, generate large amounts of sales tax. And Fullerton played a, a fairly conservative game when it came to uh, bidding for those types of, uh, of business entities. Now, as a result, there are some who really did engage uh, very strongly in that, who have very large amounts of revenue, sales tax revenue. Of course, Brea does because of the Brea Mall in large part. Uh, Cerritos was a big winner in the redevelopment derby, as was Buena Park. And they have many auto dealers, which is a very large uh, sales tax generator, but they have very many auto dealers uh, that formerly were located in Fullerton. Um, it, it is a very good question, I think, and I think it bears scrutiny much more, but I do know one thing. We've had the loss of many large business entities from our city, some who generate a lot of sales tax dollars and some who uh, generate jobs who create a lot of jobs and, and desirable jobs in our city. But as we've been moving forward over the last decade, especially or two decades, uh, many of those sources have been drying up on the city. They've been leaving, relocating, downsizing. I know there have been efforts recently to help turn this city into uh, the type where new startup businesses might desire to locate here and where we could profit in part from that growth, from helping to accommodate that. And that's why I think the focus strictly on housing is maybe a little misplaced. I think it's important to be sustainable as a city that we achieve a certain amount of balance. And if so much land use, so many land use decisions go to high rise, high density housing, uh, we may well you know, double our population but in, indeed, we will have actually made this problem worse, the problem of an imbalance. Excellent, thank you. And so Dr. Jesse Jones asked a question to follow up with that is, what do you think the city can do to attract businesses? Well, this is near and dear to my heart because I used to be a retail manager as well. And I believe there's nothing like really great service uh, you know, we provide municipal services in this city uh, at which people are a customer, not of choice, but, you know, of monopoly. They're, this is the only game in town is Fullerton Municipal Government. That being the case, you, you can develop a little bit of laxity sometimes with the customers, with the residents that you serve. I know what's very important to me is to generate the right attitudes in any service field to make sure that people know that you're there to serve them and that you're going to act promptly uh, and that you're going to have an interest in solving their problems. I do believe that's a cultural thing. And I focus on that a great deal here at city government. If we can get a majority of council members understanding how important that is and how that creates the foundation for what you are uh, uh, positing here, which is the idea that we could be uh, an island, that we could actually attract uh, many of those businesses which are going to prosper in the city. And as a result, I believe the city would prosper too. But this, this is an attitude and it's not an easy one to maintain, but I, I just, Whoever is asking that question, thank you very much. That, that is an important factor 
And it's one of the ways that this city will pull itself out of, of its current uh, difficult position. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have a couple of pre-submitted questions. The first one is, will the city council consider policies in the new housing element that will result in the production of very low and low income affordable housing? And the second part is that, what policies um, would you be open to? Well, I believe we will. And we, in fact, we are required to. And most of the time anymore, these decisions aren't left just to city councils. Uh, we have a state legislature, which uh, increasingly uh, determines uh, what, what the allocation is going to be. I mean, through SCAG, the RENA numbers, the Regional Housing Needs Assessment, uh, there has been an issue recently where Fullerton has been assigned 13,000 new units. And that seemed to be disproportionate uh, compared with other local cities. The council did uh, uh, approve actually in a widespread way and lower the bar in terms of creating uh, ADUs. So additional uh, units for residents on existing properties throughout the city. That's something that really should calculate into the fact that we're responding to try to provide more affordable housing. That, however, has been not utilized. It hasn't been utilized as one of the measurements of how well the city is doing in that regard. So I think that we're going to be open to, to trying to meet those requirements in all categories. And whoever, again, is asking this question, you mentioned, I'm sorry, was that uh, Jesse? This one was um, pre-submitted. Before, oh, okay. the, before the town hall. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, I understand fully and where that's coming from, which is it's the people who need help are the ones who we should be trying to, to help. There are many others who have their own wherewithal and there are market resources for that. I know one, one of the things that I battle with frequently is the idea that supply and demand is what's driving real estate costs so much. And that if we increase supply, then the costs will drop. Well, you know, economically that works for so many things, but it hasn't worked in this case with housing. Uh, we've had many new units created in my time on the council and I'm in my 11th year now, but there has been much more capacity created in the city of Fullerton, but those units are generally at a market rate and the market rates are substantially high right now. So as a result, uh, I think of anything, you know, it's, it's working on that end on the market rate side, but it's also not having the impact of, of lowering or making more affordable. And, and I don't believe you can build your way out of this. I think real estate is extremely expensive in California for numerous reasons. And just creating a lot more supply is not necessarily going to solve that. Thank you. We have another pre-submitted question. This comes from Barry Ross at St. Jude. And it, the question is, how might the city use the American Rescue Plan funds to address the underlying disparities that COVID elevated, such as the overcrowded housing conditions and lack of internet access to low-income households? Well, Mr. Ross, thank you for the question. I, uh, and this touches on what I spoke about, I think earlier, which is the idea that governments have to stay in their own lane to some extent. To the extent that the uh, city of Fullerton is in arrears on some core responsibilities, uh, infrastructure, and uh, actually we've drifted down in terms of public safety and in, in terms of uh, what we have available in public safety. Um, some of those core responsibilities that city governments have that uh, frankly, county government, state government and, and federal government don't have. Uh, these one-time monies, which are intended to help backfill the extraordinary costs that we had during the pandemic, that's where the brunt of these funds are going to go. I, I know that there are many other places where that money could be helpful, but I think it's going to re require some discipline on the part of the council to do that. What we'd like to see is a, an increase in prosperity 
generally, if we're able to get the city more on an upswing in terms of, uh, of wherewithal by all of its citizens, I think that we'd have many more sources to help out those less privileged or those who have severe challenges. I believe that a, a true charitable uh, approach is often the best way to go. I do, I support very much uh, the nonprofits. We have very many active nonprofits in the city of Fullerton. Secondarily though, I think there might be another resource. Uh, the federal government, as I mentioned, is cranking up the printing presses. They're, they're the only government that we deal with that doesn't really have to worry about making the ends meet on a budget. And they are doing what they can to help lift our entire society uh, out of this, this real pothole in the road that we had uh, with this pandemic and with this lockdown. So I, we will very actively pursue all grant possibilities and all federal and or state assistance uh, to be able to uh, reallocate uh, some of that money in directions where it can help people. Uh, those who are least capable in our society or at least disadvantaged in, in many ways, I, th I think that uh, if that funding is available from other levels of government, uh, we would like to help obtain that and put it to proper use. All right, and then Katie, you had a, uh, another question, I believe from Anna about parking. Yes, uh, this is a question that came in um, it was through a Spanish translation, so I'm sorry if I did not get this accurate. Um, it looks like this is someone who's representing a couple that's maybe 66 and 60 years old. They talk about um, the need to have permitted parking, and because they're in some areas there's not permitted parking, they said that it's been very dangerous for them to cross the street. So they're just asking what more can be done to allow permitted parking, um, even if they had to pay in front of their own home, they would prefer that so they don't have to cross uh, avenues, et cetera. Yes, this is a particularly tough problem. Uh, it's like that old adage about uh, investing in real estate because they're not making any more of it. And in this case, in this city, as this city is built out and as our population increases and as your average household has generally many more vehicles than in decades past, uh, the ability to store and park uh, those vehicles is, is a really big challenge. It has been suggested to come up with some form of uh, paying the city for the property use to be able to park vehicles on city streets overnight. But it's a more complicated matter than that, especially in many areas of the city. It depends on street configuration. It depends on so many other factors. I, this is one that I would very much so solicit uh, the best thinking that people have to, to resolve this problem. We've We've handled this in myriad ways. We, we allow people to, um, at least in certain areas of the city, uh, do their own uh, petition to be able to, to find out whether those neighbors want to preserve and, and be a no parking area for others where you have overflow parking, like uh, Fullerton College and, and Cal State Fullerton, where there have been big problems through the neighborhoods that way. And in many cases to allow permit parking only, which in effect allows those homeowners to annex that additional parking, that street parking. So I don't think that there is any one solution. This is going to be a multi-piece solution. And I do hear what, uh, what these uh, residents are saying. And I think that uh, the city council does want to move to alleviate any threats like that. We don't, we don't want people bar parking blocks away from their home and many of them transiting uh, unsafely at times to and from uh, their mode of transportation. So um, yeah, there, there is no easy solution for this one. I wish there was a ready answer, but uh, I do know that in, a, in an extreme case as this one seems to be, I would invite uh, these individuals, and I wish my Spanish were better to do that, but I would invite them to contact me uh, 
at the mayor's office here, and I'd be happy to do what we can to put uh, to put a few people to work on this and see if we can we can resolve their particular problem. But I know there are thousands more <laughs> behind yeah. that. Absolutely. Yes. So uh, I'm going to, uh, we have a couple more questions as we're wrapping this up. And, and it's asking, first of all, like, how can we help support you? One, one is uh, if you're looking at seeking workforce development funds from the government, how can we help you? And then the other one was from Bree was asking about um, polarizing. How is, uh, you mentioned that it was polarized in the city. How can we rally together to support this great city? Oh boy, those are great questions. They really are. Um, I think it's important that, and, and I'm receptive to it, that as long as people are civil in the way they approach, or whether people are dissatisfied or satisfied with our city government or with a particular elected officials voting record one way or another, to, to get in our face a little bit about it. I, I know it's very important when we hear in numbers from the public it can cause us to go back and rethink, you know, where we're coming from on this. But then you mentioned something else interesting too, where, where you could be of great service and value, I think sometimes is helping at least for the city of Fullerton to press certain issues to our legislators, to our um, partisan legislators sometimes where they're often bound by a kind of polarization as well. But I'd say regardless of party, Sometimes it could be helpful if uh, the average citizen is a lobbyist for the city a little bit in terms of writing, uh, emailing, calling, uh, doing what you can to make sure that our representatives in Sacramento and or our representatives in Washington are very aware that we're keeping an eye on how, what they're doing, how they're voting, and that we expect them to look out for our interests. That, uh, that once they leave uh, once they leave the city of Fullerton and go to represent us elsewhere, or whether they represent a larger area and they don't live in Fullerton, we do expect them to look out for our interests and to help preserve our right to make some decisions local, to be able to, to try to tailor, customize uh, our policies to what we need here. Uh, so often that's missing. So often from Sacramento and or Washington, you get this cookie cutter approach where everyone's going to have to do the same thing. And in a state even like California, as diverse as California is in every way, geography and culture and, and uh, you know, just so many ways, uh, econ uh, economic capability, that uh, we need to be able to um, express ourselves, represent our local uh, populace and do what we can to customize uh, that. There's nothing wrong with that diversity. Uh, policy shouldn't be one size fits all. But, but to the extent that people who are interested in this can actually beat that drum regularly uh, and make sure that all your elected officials, including us on the city council, know what it is you want, know what you expect. And uh, I, I think that that can be very constructive. Wow, thank you so much. And we, I, we really appreciate your passion and your work in the city of Fullerton. You've done so much. Um, there, if there's additional questions, it looks like some people are popping some in there. If you're able to hang out and answer them, wonderful. Once again, thank you for your time today. Um, we're going to um, just do a quick report out on the committees as we're uh, discussing our um, work collaboratively around homelessness, education, health and wellness, and our um, next gen youth. So I'm going to ask Jason just, just to share with us um, a quick update on some work in the regards to homelessness and how we can help support that effort. Thank you, Bruce, again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, well, for the, the last four weeks or so, um, we've been working with the city and now the county on some RV encampments and some solutions around that and working with folks. The Tri Parish has been doing some amazing things, helping out some people. So that's been taking a ton of energy, but I think what it's providing is a good building block as we move towards Project Hope. So. Um, I'm going to be meeting with Kelly Fritzel from the city and the chief of police to kind of figure out a game plan 
around the subcommittee and um, what we can do around um, the new center that's gonna be open this summer, um, as well as Jay's been working on some stuff around housing. Um, so I think those two pieces around housing and around outreach, um, I think we've got some good partnerships <clears throat> going and it's really something the subcommittee was working on, I don't know, about five or six years ago, if not more. So finally the city's doing it and I think it provides us a good opportunity. Excellent, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. So if you have questions, um, if you want to reach out to Jason, um, he, he can answer those in the chat as well. Um, Christian, do you wanna provide a quick update on our next gen and our youth empowerment group? Definitely, thank you, Debbie. Hi, everybody, great to see you all. In case you didn't know, uh, Bev Berryman over at Crittenton and I, we lead the Collaborative's Next Gen Youth Subcommittee. So this gives many of our collaboratives, the uh, youth serving organizations, the chance to get together and meet the first Tuesday of each month, 10 o'clock in the morning for a brief community roundtable. Uh, this gives all of our organizations the chance to share on resources, programming, special events from uh, all of our organizations with one another and really explore ways and find ways to partner to better serve the city's youth. So our next meeting is gonna be Tuesday, May 4th. Uh, if you're here and you haven't been receiving the next gen emails and you yourself or a representative from your organization would love to attend these monthly meetings, feel free to let me know. I'll drop my email in the chat. And I'd love to be able to send you those monthly updates in the meantime, in the next few minutes, I'll be emailing off to everybody in the collaborative a quick um, newsletter from our next gen partners. And that'll include a few of our next gen partner resources and flyers that you can hold on to. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, Barry, do you wanna just provide a quick update on education? Uh, yeah, so Trangley is our new chair of the committee and we had some discussion about really uh, changing the name of the committee possibly to early childhood committee because we have been focusing on early childhood because there are other uh, other groups uh, such as Project Connect focusing on the elementary uh, school age children in the city so uh, and we're focusing broader than education early childhood education is a key part of it but it's broader than that and uh, we um, talked about um, specifically the impact of COVID on uh, early childhood programs in, in the city um, and also some of the challenges I think that young parents have as well. So if anyone is interested, uh, you know, let Debbie know and we can uh, definitely encourage people to participate if they're interested in early childhood and their families. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Barry. And it looks like the next meeting will be on April 21st. So, but if you want more information, send me that, uh, send me an email and I'll forward that to Trang mm -hmm. so you get that Zoom information. Um, I'm going to invite, um, we're going to do a, another uh, update on our health and wellness, which is our Move More Healthy. Um, Corey, I believe you're here from the city of Fullerton. Hi. Yeah, I am here. Thanks, Debbie. So um, I'm just wanting to provide a couple updates and um, let everybody know that the community center, along with the many partners from the collaborative, have worked been working really hard to provide vaccination clinics here at the community center. Um, we have completed three different clinics. Um, we're about to have our second doses um, for our second clinic this upcoming Friday, and our third clinic has their second dose on May 7th. So we really appreciate everyone's um, collective effort to help with outreach. And um, also wanted to make some general updates on the virtual programming that we've discussed. Um, wanted to let you all know that the, the Parks and Rec team has put out over 90 videos that are now available on YouTube, both ranging from um, art programming to walking tours to help with the Discover Fullerton. And then um, again, the collaborative project that we worked on together with um, St. Jude and through the Movement Rate Healthy Committee was it will hopefully be live in the next couple of weeks with Cal State Fullerton Titan Radio. Um, but if there's any questions about different um, health and wellness efforts, feel free to reach out anytime. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Kerry. And then I'm going to ask Peter to provide us an update on our most recent um, um, initiative in the city. Yes. So uh, during the past three months, as many of you may probably recall, um, we've been really promoting our mindfulness, physical activity, and nutrition education in virtual classes through our New Year, New Healthy You Challenge, which was launched at the beginning of January. I did quickly want to review the end results of this New Year, New Healthy You Challenge that occurred from the month of January until the end of March, which was last week. So in total, we did host um, with all of our partners and Move More Eat Healthy 63 events. Um, from those 63 events, we did have 1,218 participants. And of those participants, we did have 435 of those um, commit to our New Year, New Healthy You Challenge, which kind of a, as a reminder was just to promote health and wellness at the individual level, focusing on mental health, physical health, and also improving our dietary intake. But um, and also something that we are trying to continue to increase awareness of is all the different resources that we're sharing through our different social media outlets. There you can also find our schedule of our in virtual classes. And so if you don't follow us yet, please go ahead and follow and like Move More Eat Healthy at Facebook and Instagram, just so we can continue to bridge the community to the resources that we're offering. Thank you. Thank you. And so our next uh, health and wellness Memorial Healthy subcommittee meeting is on Wednesday, April the 28th at 10 o'clock and you're invited to come and join us. Um, so shoot me an email and I will make sure to get you the zoom link so you can um, be able to join the, the discussion around being um, health and, and well in the city of Fullerton. Um, I also want to invite um, Kevin Mawang to share an initiative around um, uh, a focus or a focus group and town hall. Kevin. Hi guys. Um, thank you, Debbie. So um, with the recent rise of violence and hate towards the AAPI community and specifically just a week and a half ago where the, it kind of came to our hometown in Fullerton, uh, there's a hate crime in West Fullerton where a man was throwing rocks at a woman and, and complaining that uh, the Koreans were controlling him. Um, I, I approached the board and asked, is there any space or is it, is it appropriate for us to kind of leverage our network and uh, what we're doing to host some sort of um, safe space for local AAPI leaders, um, community members uh, to be able to hear one another and then uh, develop some call to actions that are coming from the AAPI um, voice. And so the board said, they agreed to it, but they had one stipulation. They're like, it has to come from the AAPI um, people, the voice there, it shouldn't be made from everybody else. So I'm gonna kind of put together a listening and action session. Uh, but what I am looking for is a planning committee to help me out and do this. So I sent out an email to everybody that's on our email list of current members um, for the collaborative asking for anybody that is in your guys' organizations that self identifies as AAPI. Um, right now at this point, it's going to be an Asian American Pacific Islander uh, safe group with there's going to be a space for allyship in the future. Uh, but at this point, uh, it's just going to be AAPI. So if you have anybody in your guys' um, organizations that are Asian American and would be interested in this, please uh, have them contact me directly. And we are going to look to mobilize this fairly quick uh, within the next couple of weeks and then hopefully report back to the board some suggestions, possible solutions, calls to action that we have after the listening session. I'll leave my email in the chat. Excellent. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you and, and for that information. Um, so what a what a great meeting. Um, and we have two minutes left. So I, I would like to um, just invite um, for those that have events coming up. I know I, I sent an email out through uh, MailChimp and I'll put that link as well in our um, chat here um, for upcoming events uh, and so please uh, make sure to um, keep me posted and keep the community posted. If you want, you can use the chat to um, include that as well um, of upcoming um, opportunities for the community to get involved, 
to participate. There are some important things happening through the county level, through each Mind Matters and the Stigma Free OC to help with mindfulness. Um, Habitat shared some information about um, um, housing and home buyer program. Uh, I know that Cal State Fullerton Center for Healthy Neighborhoods um, uh, had an event. It's going to have an event tomorrow um, with the Alzheimer's um, Orange County. And um, so please see that information is also in that link along with some job skills and rapid um, rehousing program and workforce development um, with both uh, the Orange County, but also with the YWCA. Um, there is some information about some um, mental health and suicide prevention and um, some e-cigarettes along with um, the City of Fullerton resources. Um, Terrace Chance is having a, a annual golf tournament, not until May, so um, putting that out there. And then of course we have our um, citywide um, Love Fullerton Day on the 24th of April. And um, Jay Williams is in the meeting. If you have questions for that, you can always reach out to, um, to Jay. Um, we also have uh, additional um, information about uh, let's see the Assistance League, A Taste of Fullerton, Taste of Town. I'll drop that in the, the, the box. Uh, I don't know. Um, there's a, the, it's a gift card giveaway. It's pretty amazing. So if you are interested in participating in that, I will include that in the discussion along with, I know that uh, Fair Housing is having a art contest and those art projects are due right away. So I will include that as well. But anyone else, if you have any information or any uh, upcoming events, please put that in the, the chat. And uh, the um, COVID clean, yes, excellent. Thank you so much. And I think in regards to members, we invite you to join as a member. If you have not already become a member, um, we invite you. You can go to our website at fullertoncollaborative.org. We also invite you um, to you know, um, share this information with your colleagues um, that will be available later, uh, hopefully tomorrow on our YouTube channel, which will be um, on the front page of our Fullerton Collaborative website at www.fullertoncollaborative.org. And I think with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end the live book phase, but we'll stay out here if you wanna still network until we're done. And thank you again, uh, Mayor Bruce Whitaker for coming and joining with us today. And also for all of the work that we're doing here in the city of Fullerton. I thank the board members for your time and for your talents and helping us um, facilitate this meeting.